Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be reviewing Fury from the Deep. Now obviously I've just reviewed the Macro Terror so it's kind of odd how I'm doing this next. Basically at the moment I'm in the mood for animations so well kind of. So I thought I would review this. Now recently I had watched the reconstruction on this. I had seen it before on a DVD but I watched it on uh, the Steelbook in slightly better quality. But for the first time ever, I listened to my first Lincoln narration uh, audio with a reconstruction. So obviously Fraser Hines narrate to, uh, narrated the original audio uh, CD release for this. And that is on here, which is very nice with the new reconstruction. And finally, I have found my love for Fur from the Deep again properly. Because last in like the last year, um, early last year I watched this in my mobile phone, gave it a 10 out of 10. Went months without seeing it, the animation came out on September 14th and made me think it was overrated. Then I watched it in colour, still thought it was overrated. Uh, started watching the black and white version with the commentary, never got back to it, never finished it. Um, then I watched it in colour steel, on the steelbook, treated it as its own, thought it was pretty good. Um, and then I watched it with, no, before I watched a recon with my friend Dan, still found it overrated. And now watching it with Fraser's Lincoln narration, I love Fear from Deep Again, which I'm so happy about because I didn't like going through a period of thinking it's overrated because it really is not. It's a masterpiece of television. So basically the plot is, uh, the second doctor, Jamie and Victoria, they land in the sea off of the um, coast of Kent, England, and they basically get um, uh, tranquilized and they're brought into uh, the complex, uh, this um, complex station. Basically, they're mining gas from uh, the North Sea through the pipes um, from the offshore rigs, and basically, they're sentient seaweed in evil form, and it is uh, taking people over one by one, dragging them down under, and uh, basically, um, basically controlling people and that is pretty much a plot there's not much more to it um stuff happens in it like they find out what the seaweed actually does and um you've got that great scene of quill and oak which i'll go over victoria gets kidnapped there's a helicopter flight scene um there was another thing but i can't remember and obviously this has victoria's departure so i'm gonna go over the story first the story it is really good. It is a fucking classic through from the deep. I understand why this is so highly praised. It has beautiful atmosphere from the clips that we can see. It's got great cinematography. From the tele snaps, it looks creepy as hell. The soundtrack to this as well, holy shit. It's a bit camp at times, but it really does work with it. Um, you got great act, even though we can't see them. Great acting in this. Um, Troughton's brilliant as always. Fraser, he's pretty good in it. Um, the guy who plays Robson, who I cannot remember the name of, but characters like Robson and Maggie and Van Lichen and Maggie's husband, who I can't remember the name of, they're all really good characters. Um, Robson in particular is fantastic. He's a great actor. I can't remember his name. Um, Maggie's pretty good, obviously she, we get that iconic scene later on. Van Luncheon, typical Dutch guy, but he's still very good. And the, um, um, the main guy, not the main guy, well, Maggie's husband, I can't remember his name. Again, he's really good. Um, so, the pretty good, strong cast of characters, and probably the most well-remembered ones from this, Mr. Oak and Mr. Quill. They're fucking creepy as hell. They are utterly terrifying. I mean, perfect choice of actors. Again, I can't remember the name of the guys, but amazing. That scene in episode two where Maggie is doing her hair and then you just, they open the door. It's like, I'm getting chills thinking about this. And she just goes, what are you doing here? Is there something that you want? And then they just, as soon as that music starts, they walk over to her. Then the music gets a bit more tense, like du, 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 du. they stop. She's like, What the hell? And then they go, ah. 
it's so amazing, it's so creepy, it's great body horror. And then you just get um, Mr. Woke slowly opening his mouth. And the charcoal biscuit that they like chewed up just really adds to that. Um, but it's a fucking horrifying scene. And you get um, the, I can't remember what it's called, but the repetition in the frames, basically, uh, the overlapping effect, that's it, with the mouths. And it just, it's so creepy and horrible and really disturbing. It's really chilling and creepy. It's probably well, well most remembered scene from this. Uh, they're fantastic characters. They're really good, like, sort of side villains, if you want to put it like that. They are pretty much like the seaweed dogs are the main villain, but they're like the two, like, they're the second main ones. Um, but they're fantastic. They don't say a lot, which is really cool as well. Like they just they're sort of the silent creepy type, which is very nice. And that's all I can really think about for characters. Um Yeah, that's pretty much it. But they're all really good in this. Um The story's really well written. I do like how Victor Pemberton basically because the drilling the gas from the sea was a thing that started in the late 50s, I want to say. So Victor Pemberton taking that idea and turning it into a Doctor Who story and why it might actually be maybe not a great thing to, uh, for them to do. Really good. Um, obviously, he'd done an audio drama called The Slide a couple of years beforehand because he originally pitched a script to Doctor Who and never got picked up. So he turned it into an audio drama, which basically sent it in mud. And... Um, I guess that done so well that they wanted to turn, to come back and like, right, let's do this script um, when we write parts of it. And obviously it became this. I'm gutted that Victor didn't write more because he only wrote this in the Peskitons, which is the audio I've never heard of. Apparently it's a weaker version of Fear from the Deep or something like that. Um, but I'm really gutted he didn't write more because he gets horror right, I think. And the way, the way the characters say their lines just really gets to you. So... I mean, there's not much more else to say because it's missing. But the audio for this, you know, like the the surviving audio, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I just wish it existed. Fraser's narration, oh my god, I love this so much. The reason why I ended up listening to Fraser's narration is because um, people who are watching this probably know who this guy is. Stu Bagful, he has cited this as his favourite story ever. He was disappointed with the animation, like me. And he um, he listened to the audio a lot when he was a kid because obviously we didn't have that we didn't have like the visuals for it. So he listened to the audio and it made a huge impact on him and it like terrified the shit out of him. So basically, um, sorry, someone came in. Um, basically, um, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Basically, he listened to that audio a lot and it's so deeply embedded into his mind. It's kind of like me with Power of the Daleks. I've experienced that a lot. When that special edition came out and they cut scenes out and, you know, didn't leave the long parts of audio in, I know where it's been cut because I've heard it or well, watched the animation that many times. I know what part of the soundtrack is coming up. I know how the dialogue is said and the way it's phrased. Basically, that was him with Fury. He listened to that audio so many times that it's deeply embedded into his mind. And when he was watching this animation, he had Fraser's narration sort of filling out the the scenes with no dialogue. And obviously, the animation didn't live up to what he wanted. But basically, the way he described Fraser's narration made me really want to like listen to it and watch the recon. And Fraser just adds more to it because I think there are times with Fury where the dialogue just goes on a bit too long or something just feels out of place. Fraser fills that and he makes it perfect, in my opinion. He really adds to it. The way he describes the seaweed is like these tendrils and sort of slowly weaving their way through and like dragging people down and characters talking to each other. He describes it so well. It's his tone of voice. He does. He's not like loud. He's very sort of silent about it and like the seaweed done this and that. Like really creepy but his narration is the ultimate way for me to watch this from now on this is how i will always watch fury pretty much it is the reconstruction with fairy's narration i will watch it again one day without the narration but that is the ultimate way because he just added to it and he just made me love it again which i'm so happy for like the the black and white recon with the original audio his narration i found my love for it again so i'm really happy um but yeah Fury is absolutely fantastic. It is a 
creepy, brilliant, the sixties atmospheric story. And Victoria's Departure is absolutely beautiful. Um, probably my favourite of the sixties. Um, my favourite departures of the sixties are Susan's, Victoria's, and uh, Jamie and Zoe's. But Victoria's, I think, is my favourite. Definitely. On the other hand, the animation. I've came to the final conclusion. The animation is fucking crap. So, obviously I reviewed the animation before. It was like when the thing came out. Um, The video ended up being half an hour. It stopped recording at that point. I was going to do a part two. never got around to it. And I've just took down part one. Because I thought, I want to redo this review. (sighs) The animation really does not... It didn't live up to what I wanted this to be. First of all, my main issue with it is there is no sense of atmosphere, at least when I watch it. Because when I watch it in black and white, I feel like I'm only watching it in black and white for the sake of it being more accurate in a way. Where, like, when I watched this in colour on Steelbook and treated it as its own, I thought this is pretty good. But in the terms of a recreation... There's no atmosphere to this watch. So, like, just watching it with that black and white felt kind of feels wrong to me because I feel like, again, I'm just watching an animation for the visuals and in black and white so it's more accurate. But the what we see in the animation just doesn't work for me whatsoever. There's no sense of atmosphere or creepiness. Like, when I watch it, I don't get the feeling of, like, claustrophobia and, like, tightness and, like, this is, like, it feels like a proper base under siege story. I don't get that feeling because they made the sets like ten times fucking wider. Like literally, the 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 original control room, like the main room, literally was probably a room about this size of my bedroom, and there's just like some stairs off into a door. That's all it was. In this, it is a huge, massive set with these computers all around the walls and like a desk in them, kind of off the middle where that guy sits, and you know a couple of other ones. That's what it is. And the pipe room is probably the fucking one that annoys me the most because, again, that pipe room was literally just a small room with the pipes, some nozzles and turns, and um, some step ladders. The pipe room in this is fucking huge. It literally, again, you've got these like sort of control banks. You've got this room that you go into, like on the inside of this room. There's a room. There's a room in a room. Um, and again, there's just a vastness of like pipes all the way over there on the wall and like at the lift shaft. Obviously, I get no atmosphere watching that. And again, another one that really um really annoyed me was obviously the shaft which went down to the the sort of pit of foam. In the original, that was literally just a tiny lift with a little bit of flooring. You walk towards it; it was the pool of foam, and that surviving clip we have of Van Lutchen getting dragged down to, into the foam because it's a small set. That's what makes it feel atmospheric. Like he's got no fucking chance of escaping. In the animation, it's a huge lift with a sort of circular room, then a long, wide corridor, and then a corner of the pit and a big room. So watching him getting dragged in the animation and walking down, I get no sense of atmosphere. Because it's a wide set, he could just easily, you know, he could just run away easily. Whereas in the original, in that clip, he's got no fucking chance. He's getting dragged under there. That's the problem I have. There's no sense of atmosphere with this thing, like, in the animation. And it really sucks because Fury relied on the small sets and the soundtrack as well. But I think it's the small sets which is what made it feel really atmospheric. And they changed Maggie's house slightly, which I'm not going to complain too massively about because it's just a house, but again, they should have just done it the way it was. Um, the seaweed tentacle attack scene. Now, in terms of animation, yeah, it's quite good. But in terms of recreation, I'm not for it because, again, they wouldn't have achieved that on a 60s budget. And, you know, just... <laughs> I think it's kind of I don't I don't know if disrespectful is the right phrase, but that is like a good last shining moment for that trio. 
uh, Pat, Jamie, and Victoria. You know, him flying through it because he's like, I wanted to get my hands on one of those things. Flying through like the oil rigs and that. And there was that helicopter pilot, they called him like Mad Max because he'd done crazy stunts. Obviously, he filmed, they, they filmed his, he done those um helicopter stunts for them. It just kind of disrespects it a bit, in my opinion, like in terms of the hard efforts they went through to get all, all that recorded. I know it doesn't exist anymore, but it's just kind of like, in animation, you should be re- recreating that. Because it's not a remake. It's supposed to be a reconstruction. This just doesn't do any of that whatsoever. The tele snaps, they don't even bother to match them. Basically, Gary Russell, the um, director of this, he just looked at them briefly just to get a set, sort of sense of what characters are talking to each other and like what's sort of going on in the scene. But he completely changes like things about it. Um, as in terms of where the characters are standing. And he does this thing of having wide shots and a camera angle up there and a camera angle down there and a camera angle pan around. They never would have done that in the classic series. And also, it feels like an excuse for the lip syncing. The lip syncing in this is fucking dreadful. It gets better as it goes on, but particularly in those first two episodes, it is really horrendous. Um, And it feels like... I don't like these scenes where... You've got characters standing like from the back, so like, you're you're seeing them on screen and they're standing. Um, you can only see their back and they're talking. And halfway, whilst they're talking, they will turn and they will keep talking. It's clearly the obvious reason why I've done that is to save on doing the lip syncing. And then cutting from a close up to all of a sudden a big like camera angle up on the roof. Again, they've clearly done that to shortcut the lip syncing. Because they clearly weren't given enough money. From the looks of it, it basically looks like Gary Russell just sort of gave the stuff to the, the four teams and just went, do the best you can. Which, during a COVID-19 pandemic, I can understand that because literally halfway through this production, COVID um, happened and it struck and this ended up getting delayed. So, but... And another thing that annoys me, this is the story with the most surviving footage in terms of variety. We've got censored clips. We've got loads of behind the scenes stuff. Like there's a really there's a really good chunk in the terms of seeing the production of this. None of that is matched whatsoever. Not a single bit. The closest one that comes to it is Oak and Quell's attack scene, but it's not even that good in animation. To be honest, it's still kind of creepy, but it's nothing compared to the uh, the original. My problem with that scene is when they're gassing Maggie is it keeps cutting from, like, what made that original so good was when they come into that room, the camera pans round to them to stand at the door, which is quite rare for classic, a panning shot. Um, and then them walking, like, there's very few little cuts in that, and then just, like, the overlapping with the mouths, that's what just brings it all together. In this, it just keeps cutting from Oak, Quill, Maggie. That's pretty much it. So there's no feeling of like horror in that term. They did say they wanted to keep it as close as possible, but they don't even, they don't match it at all. To be honest, it's the closest in terms of this entire animation, but it's still not amazing. But apart from that, um, Robson and the helicopter Victoria, or um, uh, when he gasses the guy after he wakes up, or the stuff at the end, which I was really disappointed with, none of that's matched whatsoever, and it's not done justice at all, in my opinion. So yeah, and another thing that really upset me, the seaweed monster, we didn't have the giant, like, because again, from the about the brief behind the scenes stuff we have from that, it looks quite terrifying. It's just a sort of thing without a head. It's got two legs and just these massive long like tentacles that just sort of flap about in the foam. In this, there's multiple ones, which I really don't like because a they look a bit crap, but also I like the idea it was this one main monster in the original that was doing all this shit. It's like taking over people it's just this one monster like less is more that's what it's about whereas in this it's just multiple ones going about and again the less is more thing you know Gary Russell did say he wanted to take this and make more of it which again I can kind of understand with Fury's reputation but 
it doesn't work because of how atmospheric the story originally was. Again, less is more. He basically turned it into a sort of new series style, which, again, I don't really like. But something this animation just doesn't have, less is more. They just completely fucking... They just... They ruined... No, they didn't ruin... Well, in terms of visuals, yeah, they ruined it. Um, and it ruined my enjoyment of the story, but watching that recall phrase and narration, out of perfection. Way better than the animation. Um... So, yes, and again, we don't have fluid movement. It's choppy. It's not, I wish we had macro terror style animation again, where it was a, you know, you get to see all the movement in the face, and this it's just, which I really don't like. I hate that because it's not realistic. They're meant to be human characters, and they just sort of, like, they just don't, like, this is the problem. The reason why what made macro terror so good is because, when an arm went out, this like you know your shoulder reacts to that. That's what you got macter. Whereas in this, it's just stiffness. That's what it is. And again, I know COVID struck in that, but I think they should have just delayed it to be honest, and just put more work into it. Um, my positives with this animation, there's a couple, not a lot, but there's a few character likenesses. They're all really good, to be honest. Um, better than what Simon Productions done, definitely. Um, Troughton looks like Troughton. Very good likeness of Victoria, I must say. Uh, Robson, look, he's a really good likeness. Uh, Van Lutchen and uh, Maggie and her husband. Um, Mr. Roke looks really good. The only two likenesses I don't like in this is Jamie. Looks nothing like Fraser Hines again. And Mr. Quill... I don't like his likeness because he does these sort of like these goofy smiles which I really hate. Um, he just, he's not creepy which is a shame. But apart from that, character likeness is so great. Detail is quite good. Um, the backgrounds in this are fucking amazing. They are hyper detailed. They look incredible. Um, I don't like how big they made the sets but like in terms of, again, if you treat it as its own, the backgrounds in this, they're really well done. Very detailed. And the smoothness of the seaweed is really good as well. Like, the tendrils, like, they're very smooth. They're not choppy. Like, they're very fluid, which, again, I really like. And the seaweed technical attack, seen him in two minds about it. I like it, but that was not what was in the original. So, and I got some, some good 3D modeling in it as well. And that's pretty much it. That's more positives about it. So I'm going to stop there because I think that's an, I've said enough on this. Overall, the reconstruction, particularly phrases and narration, beautiful television that you can listen to. Animation is fucking shit. I've came to my final, because it took me a long time to have my final opinion, so I've came to the conclusion it's it is just crap. It really is fucking crap. It didn't live up to what it should have been. So yeah. That's my review for Fury from the Deep. So I have decided that since I seem to be sort of ranking the current animations, um, kind of like I've done a review for Microsoft, I've just done Fury, I might as well do the faceless ones again, though I might need to rewatch it. I probably won't because I, I really I really don't like this animation. We'll, we will go over that when I can be bothered. Um, so I'm think I'm going to review faces ones next. But um, just to say, these are on par with each other for being my least favorite. These are my least favorite animations. Absolutely. People said that Ice Wars is bad. Um, just watch these ones. Ice Wars is accurate. Um, anyway, yeah, that's all I've really got to say. And I might review the Power Special Session. Oh, yeah, I've remembered, actually. I didn't, I was meant to review the DVD for that. Never went over it. I will do that then at some point. Apart from that, nothing else to say. So, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all soon. Goodbye.